All right, everyone. I am in Yazoo City, Mississippi, a town that calls itself the Gateway to the Mississippi Delta. All right, I am going to drive through downtown first. Just give you a good look at the town. Uh, it's interesting. I'll tell you that much. Much of it is abandoned. A lot of interesting colors here in the buildings, though. Uh, the purples and the yellows and the greens. A lot of it is in pretty bad shape, though. But when you drive through at this angle, it looks, well, kind of beautiful almost. I'm just going to drive through slowly, let you take a look at it. It's pretty early in the morning, about 9 a.m. It's going to be a beautiful day though, looks like. And there are areas that'll look really bad. Um, this is one of them. I did a little exploring yesterday. So you can see um, there are some pretty bad places that caught on fire, it looks like. Uh, that's something, isn't it? Look at all that. I guess that's being torn down. Can't really tell. Anyway, uh, I'm going to take a look around and I'll tell you about the town as I do. I'm going to take another swing into downtown. While I do that, I'll tell you about the city. Uh, in 1904, the entire downtown was burned to the ground. There are some who said that a witch did it, but in actuality, it was just a little boy playing with matches. So everything you see downtown was built uh, after 1904. The town, uh, well, here's the numbers. The poverty rate is 44.9%. That's pretty high, but it, even more disturbing number is children under six 64.6% 6 of them live in, the, uh, live in poverty now that makes you sad that's really high really high the city's been losing population for years year 2000 there were 14,550 people here 2020, 10,316. So that's quite a big population loss. Yeah, I want to get a good look at this Bank of Yazoo building. That's pretty cool looking, isn't it? Anyway, uh, I'm going to stop here and walk around a little bit. and uh, I'll tell you more about the town as I do that. All right, I'm at the top of downtown. Uh, like you saw in the drive-thru, a lot of colors here. It's really bright. It looks fairly recent too. Uh, let's see, this old Ben and Franklin Five and Dime. That's just plain old awesome. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, they have music playing all the time. Really nice architecture here. Uh, I love that. That's Creole style. Something you might see in New Orleans in the French Quarter. The balcony's up on the second floor like that. That's awesome. Another look at these balconies. Tom's Cafe. Anyway, uh, I have already told you about the poverty rate and it is pretty bad here. Let me give you some of the other numbers. Um, median household income is 24730 that is, that is low. That's an entire household on average here makes less than $25,000 a year. 
per capita incomes right at 14,000. Uh, home values. U.S. Census in 2020 says the average home was worth $70,100. $70,000 for a house. That was the average. Now, uh, Realtors in September of 2022 says it is 124,800 now. That's a pretty substantial jump. Uh, still 124,000 to get a house. That's pretty cheap. According to rent.com, it's really cheap to rent an apartment. One bedroom will cost you $571. That's low. Two bedroom will cost you 743 on average. A three bedroom apartment to rent, it runs about 924. Uh, that is cheap. So, yeah, incomes are low. Cost of living, though, is clearly very low here. I'm getting to a part of downtown where it looks like they haven't really started working on yet. Let's get a close look here. You should be able to hear that music in the background. It plays all the time. That's a pretty nice addition. Uh, it's pop music, though. I mean, this is the Delta, folks. Let's hear some of those blues. But anyway, yeah, there's a building that torn out here. Looks like they're working on something. Could be interesting. Yeah, entire building's been torn out here. Here is a shot of downtown from where I'm at now, the other end of it. Let's do a slow pan around, give you a look. Um, here to the left, the fire burned this building down, or mostly built, uh, burned it down. Not sure what's going on over here. Huh. Yeah. That is definitely fire. <laughs> Wow, made a mess of this, didn't it? Building over here. It just looks like they're in the process of tearing it down, maybe? Hmm. Hey, look at that. That is a big mess. Interesting. And then downtown ends here. This is the end of it. All right, I, uh, I'm going to get back in the car. Uh, they got a stop sign here. There's a stop light, but it doesn't work. So I guess instead of fixing it, they uh, just put a couple signs up. Well, it's definitely cheaper. Defunct car wash. Yeah, I'm just going to head up in this direction a bit. Man, look at that. See, this is what happens when a town shrinks in population and uh, 
that means the tax base and the tax revenue dwindles uh, and there's just no money to fix things like that yeah, there's a lot of empty in empty buildings uh, just falling apart good old ice machine Wow. I am a block on the other side of downtown. Big pretty house there. Uh, Bethel AME Church here. It's got a placard on it. Uh, wow, and the residential really quick. Somebody threw their shoes up there. See that? Uh. Driving to a few of the neighborhoods near downtown. I was here yesterday and there was something that caught my eye along here, so I wanted to show it to you. Yeah, check this out. Uh, Lamar convenience store That's got to be one of the world's smallest convenience stores yeah, That's something huh? So some shotgun houses or oh, there's one anyway You see them here and there here Over on this side of downtown, got some really nice houses. That's very southern. Yeah, another one over here. Uh, beautiful streets and neighborhoods here. nice here and hear that train train runs through town I heard it several times overnight in the hotel we're actually staying here in this town anyway uh, yeah this is a real nice neighborhood I'll look here got a couple of uh, Shotgun. Oh, I guess that's not a shotgun house. It's got a little thing on the back there. Looks like a shotgun house. That one is. I find those really interesting. I don't know why. I guess because where I grew up, they didn't exist. Never seen them before until uh, I got down in the deep south. Well, if that's going to do it for here. I'm going to head to the next town. Uh, the name of it is Louise. That's coming up next. All right, everyone, I am approaching Louise, Mississippi. This is the first thing I'm seeing coming into town. I, you know, I don't know what to say to that. Uh, In half a mile, arrive at Louise. All right, thank you, Australian Siri. She's directing me towards the downtown. This is a city that's dying really hard. Not even a city, it's a town. Let's not kid ourselves. Uh, 1960, 
there were 481 people here. That's when the town was its largest. Today there's 178 people. 178 people. Uh, that's like uh, nearing ghost town status. Anyway, I should be approaching or getting close to downtown here pretty quick. All right, Siri says I'm here. Yeah, this looks like downtown. I mostly wanted to come here because there is a world famous barbecue that comes from this town made by a guy named Hoover Lee. Uh, it's an Asian inspired barbecue sauce that's renowned the world over. Hoover Lee was a Chinese immigrant who came to town, settled here, and developed this barbecue sauce. Mostly it's just shipped to the places that need it. But my understanding is there is a store here where you can buy it. I was going to buy some if I can find it. I'm not seeing the store. Uh, so I'm going to look around a bit. I've turned around. I'm heading back in. Uh, I just want to show you guys this. I don't know what to make of it. Private property. I guess that's a home. But that is a serious accumulation of honestly what do you guys think it, it just looks like trash to me wow I've never seen anything like that I'm just gonna head here in this direction here's another look that's a lot of stuff big pile of mattresses here Uh, some sort of business which is no longer operating here continental ginning system interesting let me see what else is here a couple of numbers that uh, strike you when you read them about this town. Median household income is 31,400. Now that's higher than Yazoo City. But the number that really grabs you is home values. In 2020 the US Census said that um, the average home here was worth 47,500. I'll go straight. Today, Zillow has one home listed for 53800 That's just astonishing. Uh, the average home is around $50,000 here. That's it right there. That's where you used to could buy that barbecue sauce. It's closed now though. Doesn't look like there's anything open here. We've got one cat walking the streets. There he is. I'm out on foot taking a quick look around. Uh, look at all these cats. Somebody's been putting food out for them. This is the place, Lee Hong Company Food Store, with the barbecue sauce. Hmm. Yeah, there's nothing there in that store. I just glanced in. Somebody's here, though, feeding cats. Wow, it's definitely quiet, isn't it?
crazy that places like this exist. Homes are so inexpensive here, but uh, honestly, I was thinking about that. You guys saw what I saw driving in town. Uh, that might be accurate. You know, home values, average home, 50,000. Wow. There's a couple cars here on the street though. All right, well, you know what? I'm gonna head to the next town. It is called Belzoni. Lots of interesting stuff there, I'm thinking. All right, everyone, I have arrived in Belzoni, Mississippi. Driving into downtown right now. The town was named after a 19th century Italian explorer. His name was Giovanni Belzoni. The town's claim to fame, there's two of them. One of them is that it's the catfish capital of the world. And it may be a legitimate claim because 60% of all U.S. farmed catfish comes from here. Uh, it also calls itself the heart of the Mississippi Delta. What I'm going to do is get out on foot and then I'll tell you more about the town. Okay, I'm out on foot. I'm going to walk around a bit, tell you about the town. First of all, the population. Peak population in this town was in 1960 when there was 4,100 people here. Today, 2020, or at least in the 2020 census, there are a little over 1,900. So the town has lost well over half its population and it's steadily losing population every year. Uh, very much a fading, dying town. Interesting place though. Uh, they have these catfish all over town. They are statues of catfish that they made called Catfish on Parade. Obviously because this is the catfish capital of the world. So those are all over town here. You see them everywhere you drive. Uh, I'm going to... Yeah, I'm just going to go up here and take a look and see what's up here. This was the first commercial business to run commercials on a blues program on the radio. The very first one to buy commercials for blues music. So that's pretty cool. Um, some hard numbers about the town. Poverty rate is 34.7. Median household income is 33,900. In 2020, according to the census, the average house here was worth $70,000. Realtor.com today says you can get one for about $93,000. So like a lot of the houses here in the Delta, they're inexpensive. You can get them for under $100,000. Anyway, there's City Hall right there. Another catfish. I'll just wander this way a little bit. Take a look. Yeah, that thrift shop sign. That's my kind of thing. I love that. Let's see if I can zoom in on it. That would look real good in my man cave. Let's see if I can get an even closer look. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Alright, another look at the downtown. I'm going to make my way back to the Bronco. And uh, let's look around a little bit more and see what else is here. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think these are abandoned. Just crammed up right next to each other. Tower. I love Belzoni. All right, uh, that's going to be enough time here. Time to head to the next destination. The small town of Hollandale. Mississippi. So that's coming up right now. Alright everyone, I have arrived in Hollandale. Uh, this is downtown. It's not really big. Actually smaller than I thought it would be because Back in 1980, there were 4,300 people here. Uh, 2020, there are 2,300. So the town has lost, geez, over, or close to half its population. Yeah, very little to the downtown. Uh, that is being left to nature there. I guess I'll see what's down here. Um, poverty rates 32 percent. Yeah, it's pretty high. Um, median household incomes 35,400. But the number that really grabs you is the. Uh, well, like all other places, is the average value of homes. Uh, U.S. Census pegs it at 79,400 in 2000. So again, uh, under under 100,000. Ah, uh, look at this old building. Not sure what that was. Somebody can fill in. It's really interesting. Hmm. Some rivers there. It's kind of nice. Well, let's see what's over here. Yeah, that's pretty. So take a look at this house. Stately and beautiful. So I'm asking you guys a question. Knowing that the average home value here is $80,000, what do you think that sells for? Here. If you were to put that house for sale here, what would you get for it? Legitimate question. I have no idea. Uh, I mean, if the average home is that inexpensive, I can't even imagine. I know that in Dallas, probably 800000 What do you guys think that house would sell for here? Uh, yeah, answer in the comments. Uh, I have no idea. I'm really curious what uh, other people think. Well, I think that's enough of this town. Uh, time to head to the next one. It's called Anguilla. All right, I'm arriving in the town of Anguilla right now. Uh, it's real small. 2020, there were 496 people here. Peak population was in 2000, a little over uh, 900. Very small town, it's lost nearly half its population. The two numbers that really stuck out for me concerning this town is one, median household income, 
Uh, it's 24,900. And then home values, according to the US Census, in 2020, average home here uh, is worth 33,000. $33,000 for a home. This Bronco costs more. Uh, that's mind boggling. I, I can't imagine any place where a house is that inexpensive. Um, I looked at Zillow right before I came here to do this video, or came into the town, and they have one home for sale for 135,000, but it is a trailer, a mobile home. And uh, looking at the picture, yeah, there ain't no way <laughs> I would pay that for this mobile home. Anyway, I'm gonna look around a little bit. This part of the town is actually real nice. I mean, it's old, but you've got this river here. Uh, you can get a house right on the edge of the river. Again, I wonder, how much these homes would sell for with the average price being in the 30,000s because uh, these look nice look at that it's a nice house and it's right on the river which is right here wow okay well this is a real small town so I'm not going to spend a lot of time here going to head to the next town, the last town on this trip, uh, it's called Rolling Fork. It's got a couple claims to fame here, the town does, but we'll start with the population. In 2020 there were 1,883 people. Peak population was in 1980 when there was just shy of 2,600. So the town is, uh, like all these others, steadily losing population. Um, poverty level is better here, 16.9%. Median household income is 37,500. Uh, home value in or the average home value, according to the U.S. Census in 2020, was 74000 I couldn't get an average, but I did find two houses for sale here. Uh, one was 42000 the other was 125000 So I guess that would be about an $80,000 average. Anyway, I'm going to get out here and show you something real quick. Because, like I said, the town has two very, very interesting uh, claims to fame. All right, well, first up, you see a bear there. Uh, look at his glasses and a mustache. Kind of looks like uh, Teddy Roosevelt, doesn't it? This town is where the teddy bear originated. In 1902, Teddy Roosevelt came here to hunt with a hunting party. And uh, there's another bear over here. I'll go take a look at it. Anyway, they were hunting and uh, some of the members of his party caught a bear, tied it up, and asked the president, Theodore Roosevelt, if he wanted to kill it. He said no. Uh, he said that would be unsportsmanlike, and he's right. So the bear became famous. It became known as Teddy's Bear. And uh, shortly thereafter, a store in New York City uh, created a teddy bear, started selling them, and as you know, the rest is history. This town has a second claim to fame. That is, this is where Muddy Waters is from. A uh, legendary bluesman who electrified blues music. He is one of the fathers of rock and roll. Now there's some uh, disagreement as to where he was actually born. Uh, was it here in this town or nearby in a place called Jug's Corner? But Muddy himself says that he spent a lot, a lot of time here as a kid. Uh, eventually he ended up in Clarksdale 
uh, another town I've done a video for. But anyway, he is uh, one of the most influential musicians in modern history. Uh, a lot of huge musicians and bands cite him as inspiration. Uh, Beatles did, Rolling Stones did. In fact, the Rolling Stones named themselves after a Muddy Water song uh, called Rolling Stone. Muddy Waters was in the second class in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1987. Uh, anyway, this is a replica of the shack that he grew up in. And you can hear the music in the background, that's Muddy Waters. Uh, apparently they play his music here all the time, which is cool. But anyway, yeah, this is supposedly what he grew up in, something very similar to this. Uh, it's a replica, I do know that. I don't know if we can go in or not, probably not. No, but we can look in the window. Yeah, he grew up in something like this. Very small. So, wow, this little town, that's a lot of stuff. A lot of amazing history for a town this little. Birth of the teddy bear and the kind of birth of the guy who basically created rock and roll, rock and roll music. All right, so, well, I'm going to end that. Uh, the video here that's gonna be it so uh, I'm not sure where we're going next whatever it is it'll be up in a couple days so be looking for that